from Peekaboo Pattern Shop. Today we're going to learn how to sew the binding and the placket on the Denali, Summit, and Kodiak pullovers. All of these patterns are available at peekaboopatternshop.com and they come in men's, women's, and kids sizes. For the collar we have a few options. You can do a single layer collar if you're using a thicker fabric. If you're using a thinner fabric, you'll probably want to use a double layer collar. I'm using micro fleece for this collar, so I'm going to do two layers. With the double layer collar, um, you can just lay them on top of each other with wrong sides together and then bind the top edge, uh, which is what I'm going to do today. Your other option is to do them right sides together and just sew along this top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance and then turn it right side out like this and press it flat and it'll just have a seam across the top edge. Um, since I'm doing the binding, I'm going to go with wrong sides together. You want to lay them out like this and then just base together along the edges and you'll treat it as one piece when you're following the tutorial instructions. Now if you're using a really thin and drapey fabric like French terry or something, you know, it's quite a bit thinner than fleece. If you're standing your collar up and you can tell that it's just going to like fold over on itself, you might want to use some fusible interfacing on the wrong side of one of your collar pieces just to give it a little more structure. So my collar is ready to go. I am going to get the top edge bound. For the binding, you have a few different options. Today I am using this knit bias tape. Um, so it's like double fold bias tape, except it's stretchy. You don't want to use the regular cotton bias tape that doesn't have any stretch to it. That won't work for this project. Um, I got this from knitfabric.com. have it in quite a few colors. The other options you have, you can do fold over elastic. You want to make sure you use the one inch width. The 5 eighths is way too skinny to try and wrap around fleece and you'll just have a terrible time with it. Um, so this is the one inch, the wider elastic. Uh, the pattern instructions also have making your own knit binding, which is what I do most of the time. And it's very similar to this finished knit binding, except you just have to do some of the pressing yourself, which is not a big deal at all. So I'm going to start by showing you with this uh, pre-made binding how that works. I cut out my piece for the collar binding using the pattern. You're going to want it just a little bit shorter than the top of the collar. It just helps pull the collar in to make sure it doesn't get uh, any weird gaps when you sew your binding on. And with this pre-made binding, I just sandwich it right around and then sew it in place along the bottom edge of the binding. So I'm just going to put in a few pins. Make sure it stays in place. This can be a little trickier with two layers for your collar and especially something fluffy with fleece just to make sure that you have it wrapped all the way around. Okay, You could do more pins. I normally just pin it in a few places. So I'm going to bring this over to my sewing machine now and show you how to sew it down. So I'm just going to use a long straight stitch to attach this. You could also use a zigzag if you wanted, but I like the look of the straight stitch and it still has enough give to it that it doesn't take all the stretch out of the binding. So I'm sewing on the bottom edge of the binding. So normally it works out pretty well to just line up the folded edge of your binding with the edge of your presser foot. And I'm just going to kind of wrap this around and stretch it slightly as I go. You could use more pins if that makes you more comfortable. Okay, so now you're going to want to just flip it over and make sure you caught the binding all the way across on the back side. I normally don't get the back looking quite as pretty as the front, but uh, if you used more pins and were a little more careful, you could probably get that looking 
just as good on the back as it does on the front. But this is the pre-made knit binding and now I'm gonna show you the fold over elastic. So the fold over elastic is very similar to the knit binding. We're just gonna sandwich it over, stretch it slightly as we go and sew it down. And this is actually a little bit wider than my knit binding was. And this is a single layer collar, so it's quite a bit easier to get it in place. You can use a zigzag stitch or you could use the long straight stitch again. I'm going to stretch this slightly, wrap it around and sew it in place. So here's the finish elastic and I got that looking really nice and tidy on both sides. It was a little easier with the wider width. So make sure you're using the one inch fold over elastic, not the five eighths. You'll have a terrible trying to try to sew this down with five eighths. So our last option is uh, the knit binding and this is what the pattern instructions will walk you through. Uh, just since there's a few more steps to it. Uh, I already pressed one long edge over. This is the edge that's going to be on the inside and gets tucked in. Um, and then the pattern also has you press, uh, fold it in half and press flat just to give you that center press line. So I'm going to sew the raw edge of the binding to my collar, stretching it slightly as I go so it fits. Uh, normally I do this on my serger, but since I'm already sitting here at the sewing machine, I'm just going to use my sewing machine for this today. Okay, so now we're going to flip the binding up. And this is the right side of the collar piece. And you'll turn it over. And you're going to refold the binding on the press lines. So here's my, my pressed edge. I'm wrapping over the seam allowance. And you're going to want to pin it in place, or you could use a washable glue stick, wash away wonder tape to hold it down. To make sure you get this nice and perfect. So this is going to give pretty much the exact same finish as the pre made knit binding. Uh, you just have one more step of sewing it on since you don't have quite as good of a pre-pressed line it's easier to sew it on in two steps instead of one so i have this all pinned i'm going to flip it over to the right side because that's the side that i care about looking nice and pretty now i'm going to sew along the bottom edge of the binding So there's my binding on the front and on the back. It's also nice and tidy. And again, I was just using one collar layer for this demonstration, which is easier than the double layer just because you're not trying to sew through quite as much bulk. So that's how you get the collar bound. And now we're going to go back over and attach it to our pullover. I already sewed the collar to the neckline of the pullover. So now we're ready to add the placket. Um, the instructions do include an option to bind the neckline seam so that it would be covered up like this. I opted to just top stitch this time so I just pressed my seam allowance down and top stitched it. Um, so I have that attached so now we're ready to add the placket pieces. First you're going to need to prep the placket pieces by adding the fusible interfacing to the wrong side of the placket. And to find the placement for the interfacing, first what you'll do is fold the placket in half like this and press it flat. Then you open it back up and line up the interfacing with that center fold line. So I've added the interfacing on both pieces and then the outside edge is going to get folded and pressed as well so that when you refold on the center line, that folded edge will meet up with the edge of the interfacing. So now I'm going to pin this to the pullover. 
So you want to attach the side with the inner facing to the edge of the pullover. So I'm going to line it up from the bottom edge. I've got right sides together. And the top of the placket is going to hang over the pullover by half an inch. You see how there's extra placket right here. That's how we'll finish the edge of the placket. Let's pin that in place. So I'm going to go sew this placket in place right along the edge of the interfacing and then I'll do the same thing on the other side as well. I have the placket attached on both sides and now I'm going to trim the seam allowance of the placket just to reduce the bulk a little bit. Don't trim the seam allowance along the pullover, you're only going to trim the placket. So I'm just going to trim that down both sides. Now the reason we're not trimming down the whole seam allowance is that when you are going to be finishing the placket, it's going to wrap around like this and you need enough of an edge here to tuck inside the placket. If you trim it really close, then it's going to be hard to keep it tucked in when you're trying to top stitch it down. Okay, so now we need to finish the top edge of the placket. So we're looking at the right side of the fabric right now. I'm going to fold it in the opposite direction of that center press line. I'm going to fold it over like this and I'm going to sew across the top edge as close to the top of our collar as we can. So you're going to want to use a sewing machine, not a serger. So looking at it from the back side, here's our inner facing. So you're going to be looking at the other side of the placket. I have this little edge right here pressed over, that was already pressed. So your pressed edge should meet up with the edge of the placket right here. You want those to meet up. So I'm going to go sew that in place now. I'm ready to sew across the top edge of my placket and make sure all my edges are still folded over how I want them to be. Now I like to sew this from the wrong side, I just think it's a little easier. I'm going to position my needle right next to the edge of the binding, the top edge of my collar, and then sew across the top of the placket. Now you can trim the seam allowance here at the corner, and then you'll want to trim this down a little bit and then repeat this on the other side. Now that we've sewn across the top of the placket, we're ready to turn this right side out and finish it up. I'm just going to flip this little corner right side out. And we're going to be refolding it on our initial press lines. This going to look nice and pretty from the right side and then we're going to turn it over make sure we look at, get it looking good on the inside. Make sure your edge here is tucked under and then you'll pin that in place so that it's covering the placket seam allowance. This is where we sewed the placket to the pullover. It's our seam. I'm going to fold this right over it. And I'm going to put my pins on the right side since I'm going to be sewing from that side. Make sure all those seams are tucked in so it looks good from both sides. Now it can get pretty bulky up here in the top corner and I like to just pound it flat a few times. You can use a rubber mallet or I just normally use the end of my scissors. So you're just going to hammer on that a few times and it really does help flatten it out and it's going to make it a lot easier for you to top stitch through these bulkier fabrics. Yeah, that'll pin in place and then you're just going to sew around all sides of the pocket. So I already did that on the other side. So here's what it's going to look like when it's finished. You have nice finished edges on the inside and outside of the placket. And then you'll just 
finish out your pullover following the rest of the instructions in the tutorial. Happy sewing!